Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, D546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. All right, so I wanted to talk about Odell today. Uh, listen, the videos have been slow. The content has been slow. Again, I just started a new job a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how to balance this stuff because I still am in uh, grad school too, finishing that up soon. So hopefully once I get uh, finished with that, things should start to flow a little bit quicker and I can at least get up three to four videos a week. I think right now I'm about two or three, one to two or something like that. But anyway, I want to talk about Odell Beckham. Giants Twitter has been a, in a complete, it's been, it's been crazy. Giants Twitter has been out of hand. Odell Beckham has been getting pinned to the wall. People are basically stoning this guy. People are rooting for his life to, to be miserable. People are rooting for his entire career to be over. First off, I never got the, I never got the point of rooting for a human being to have a miserable life, rooting for a human being to not be able to have a good career. I mean, do you go to a mailman and tell him, I hope you get fired tomorrow? Do you, you go to anybody in their career and, and just hope that they're not able to do the thing that they love to do every day? It's kind of strange to me. Kind of strange to me. Booing, that's one thing. Uh, a ton of things that fans do, very understandable. I'm very upset with the, with the money I spent on Giants tickets this year and the fact that they're not that good. I can be upset. All of those things are very, very understandable. But once you start going to the human being and you start rooting for people's livelihoods to be taken away from them and you start rooting for them, them personally to live a miserable life, at that point, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say at that point. It seems like people don't view Odell Beckham as a human being. And I just wanted to come on here because I've seen a lot of people say Odell Beckham has done nothing for the Giants. Uh, Odell Beckham has been nothing but an issue for the Giants. And, and Eli Manning is the only reason that Odell Beckham is relevant. And I've heard a bunch of things. First off, I want to attack that last thing I just said. Eli Manning in 2013. What do you have about 17 touchdowns and 27 interceptions? Now, we all know about the Hakeem Nick special, the Brandon Myers special, everybody that just wanted to pop the ball into the air. And we know that those interceptions were inflated in 2013. But what I will say is I knew that. I knew it. But when I saw a bunch of Giants fans, people forget I was on YouTube in 2013. I was on Giants social media around that time. And I was a guy who never faltered on Eli Manning. I never faltered on Eli Manning. The guy never, I never faltered. I said, if you give him an offensive line, he's the same guy. He's going to get us to the playoffs. He's going to win big games for us. I never faltered on Eli Manning. But a lot of Giants fans that I see that, that, <laughs> that definitely were attacking Eli Manning back then, that definitely were saying that we need to draft a quarterback. We need to move on. These same Giants fans that say we should have drafted Patrick Mahomes. And I mean, and sure, you can have that argument. You can definitely say that. These same Giants fans that are saying that Odell Beckham trashing Eli Manning on TV or in the interview or whatever, same people saying that were the same people trashing Eli Manning before Odell even got there. These are the same people that were saying that Eli Manning was done and we needed to replace him and we're being ungrateful. Same people that wanted to replace him in 2010. Same people who wanted to replace him before he won the first Super Bowl. So I don't understand where this is coming from. As soon as Odell Beckham hits the scene, 2014, Eli Manning, out of nowhere. When was the last time he threw for 30 touchdowns before that? It was, it was I think, about three or four years before that. But he throws for 30 touchdowns after a season where people said that he was done. 30 touchdowns. The next season, 35 touchdowns. Odell Beckham got here, and he made Eli Manning better. And Eli Manning made him better. Guess what? Every single tandem in NFL history that's been as good as, as Eli and Odell were and as Eli and Plax were and as all these other people, all these other quarterback receivers, Jordy Nelson, Aaron Rodgers, all of these combinations, they both make each other better. That's the point. If Eli Manning was able to just turn any off-the-street bum receiver into a 1,300-yard, 1,400-yard, 13, 10-touchdown receiver, we wouldn't need to draft Odell Beckham in the first round. 
because we would always be having a 1300 yard, 1400 yard receiver. And how many times have we had that in Giants history? Not that many times. Hakeem Nicks, 1100 yards a couple of times, a thousand barely. Victor Cruz had that one huge season, but after that, he was never the same guy. We have never had someone that we could just throw out there and, and let Eli Manning just gift them 1,400 yards. Why are we acting like Eli Manning didn't throw slants that, he, that, that Odell took to the house? Yes, he helped Odell. That is not a debate. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever touch a football, to ever grace the field. But he did not just give Odell all of his talent and everything that he accomplished was only because of Eli Manning. That is completely not true. And if you're saying that, it, it doesn't make any sense. And then I want to address the people who say that Odell Beckham has done nothing here. If you look at the Giants leaderboards, if you look at the Giants history, you can't go through receiving history without noticing that someone seems to show up in Giants history. He's second in receiving, second in receiving touchdowns. If he stayed here, even with Daniel Jones, even with ever who would have been here, and he would stay here in the same, you know, in the same organization, the same organization that placed that sort of belief in him that actually gave him opportunities, who actually a quarterback that actually threw the ball to him when he was open. He would be the Giants leading receiver within, you know, one or two years right now. That didn't happen. He got injured. Things happened. But as far as when he was here, the dude was second all time and, and, and most of the receiving stats. So I don't want to hear anything about he didn't do anything. That, that, that's history right there. That's history. He's one of the best Giants wide receivers ever. I mean, or, well, I'll say one of the greatest Giants receivers ever. And if you look at pound for pound, and I don't even want to say pound for pound because it, it takes things away. But if you look at, if you're making a Giants all-time team and you want to go and play that game right now, Odell Beckham is going to be on the field. He's going to be on the field. He's going to be a starter because I love Amani Toomer. Amani Toomer was amazing. I love Plactico. Plaxico was amazing. But if you have a Giants all-time roster and you're lining up receivers in their prime, Odell Beckham is the best wide receiver that ever put on a Giants uniform. Not the greatest. Listen to me. Not the greatest because Imani Toomer was here. He won Super Bowls here or Super Bowl here. He went to another Super Bowl. Not the greatest. Same thing with Plax. Plax is a monster. Plax is the only guy I really throw up there. Him and, and Cruz and Knicks, they're all up there right behind Odell. But if you look at the skill set, you look at who you're throwing out there, if you want to play in a vacuum, Odell Beckham is your guy. Dude is one of the best players to ever put on a Giants uniform. And that's fact. So I don't understand why we have to bash this guy and, and take away from his talent just because of what he said on the TV and just because he, you know, he got traded and, and things didn't go the best. I don't understand why we have to attack people as humans, why we need to uh, question people's character and question people who defend him's character because you disagree with them. I'm not going to ever be out here saying that I need to, you know, I need to wish bad on someone because of something they said about the Giants or a Giants player. I need to wish bad on their career. I need to hope that they, their life is a failure. None of that stuff makes any sense to me. That's pretty much what will prompted me to make this video is that there's just a ton of, of just nonsense out there. What did the guy do to make you hate him so much from 2014 to about 2017 or whenever he was traded? People weren't turning on the games. Sorry, I hate to say it. I hate to say it because Eli is my favorite player of all time. People were not turning those games to watch Eli play behind Eric Flowers and Bobby Hart and the, and the sundry of terrible offensive linemen that we had. People weren't tuning in to watch any standout defensive player because we didn't have any. People weren't tuning in to watch Ruben Randall. People weren't tuning in to watch any of that stuff. People turned on Giants games for years while we were horrible, while we've been a laughing stock from that point to now. People turned on those games to see Odell Beckham play. That's the point. There were times where he was our only light, our only redeeming quality was that we had a talent that generational on our roster every week. And people want to try to minimize this guy's talent. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. So just remember when you're criticizing someone, criticizing a sports player, that they're a human being. And let's be real when we criticize someone. 
I don't I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. I don't like him as a person. I don't like him as a, as a person, but he's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever test the field. It's just facts. And and, and the, the thing that's the stuff that's out about him. I mean, I agree with some of these, some of he said. I, I agree with things that he didn't say. You can go either way with it. But Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest football players to ever touch the field. And just because I don't like the guy as a person or I don't like things that he said in the past or this and that doesn't mean that you can just deny the guy's talent. And it doesn't mean that you can deny what he's done for his organization. The same way that you cannot deny what Odell has done for our organization. Yes, we haven't won a Super Bowl with Odell. But when, when do you look to a receiver to go get you a Super Bowl? David Tyree. Do you think that he could just go to any team and just win a Super Bowl? Why do you think he's a Giants legend? Because of one catch that he made in, in, in the Super Bowl. But do you think he gets there with just any team? So Odell Beckham had that one bad playoff game, but he had one playoff game because he was on a horrible franchise for years. He had one chance at the playoffs. Eli Manning went to playoff games before through two interceptions and no touchdowns. We don't call him someone who's a choke artist who can't, you know, stand the moment. We don't do that to Eli because he had more than one chance. Because when Eli Manning was here for the first part of his career, the Giants were a class standout, perfect, not perfect, but, you know, first class organization. But to do what we're doing, Odell, it needs to stop. Give the dude his flowers. Yes, he got cut. Yes, he's not the same player as he was before. But show the man some respect. Because you cannot tell me that you were turning on that TV and you weren't rooting for that dude to succeed and you weren't rooting for him and he wasn't entertaining you in a dark part of Giants history that's still going on now and we don't have anything like that. We don't have any. We're hoping that Kadarius Tony can be that, but right now we don't have anything close to that on the roster right now. And you see how miserable Giants fans are right now. So I just wanted to say my piece right there. Um, put some respect on Odell's name. The dude is a Giants great. I'm not backing off of that hill. If you don't like it, too bad. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.